Welcome to this episode of Bake It Up A Notch Bite Size. These are our little mini episodes that come in between our full episodes where we find some of the things you guys want to know most about and give a little bit more information. And you know I couldn't make it this far into the new year without talking about pie again. Luckily, you guys had so many questions surrounding our four-part pie spectacular. Just as I thought, four parts wasn't enough. We've got so much to say about pie. But one of the most asked questions was about crimping. In this episode, we're going to show you 10 ways to creatively crimp your pie crust edges. If you're loving Bake It Up a Notch and our new Bite Size episodes, be sure to click like and subscribe so you can be made aware when new episodes come out each month. Let's start baking! First up, we're going to do my classic finger crimp. This is the crimp I use the most often using my favorite tool in the pastry kitchen, my hands. So I've got my pie dough in front of me. I've done my technique of folding the edges under. You can see all of that in the first episode of our Pie Spectacular where we talk about doughs and crusts. It gives us the perfect edge to be able to crimp. It's got a little bit more padding because we folded some of that excess under. With the finger crimp, you're gonna make a V shape with your dominant hand. So if you're left-handed, it would be this way. But you're gonna make a bit of a V shape using your thumb and pointer finger. And then you're gonna use your pointer finger of your non-dominant hand as well. And what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be pushing your hands in towards each other, but you're also gonna be pushing down a little bit. And that's that combination. So it's both in towards each other and also down. That's what's helping to seal it towards the pie plate. If you need to, you can flour your hands a little bit and then we're just gonna press in. And the wider that shape of the V is, the more wide your crimp will be. So if you want a really fine crimp, you wanna make your fingers really tiny. So then the next crimp will just kind of begin right where the last one ended. And we'll just keep working our way around the pie plate. That's one crimp down. Let's get our next pie and try another. Our next crimp is called the rope crimp. And this is actually one of those crimps where there are multiple ways to do it. But this is the way that I do it because I struggled with this crimp for years. A lot of people do this one-handed using their thumb and their finger. But I use both of my four fingers to do it. You're gonna hold your pointer fingers parallel to one another and we're kind of gonna squeeze the dough between our fingers. And it's gonna rise up between and then we'll kind of repeat that process. So we're gonna start by squeezing the dough and I'm kind of holding my fingers at an angle to make kind of a diagonal line. And again, flour your fingers if you need to. And then I'm gonna put my finger right next to where that last one was to start the next. And that's how we can kind of keep it looking continuous. This is one of my most used crimps, but let's move on to another type. This next crimp makes a bit of a scalloped effect, but it's also a good example of how using your hands in different ways can make slightly different types of crimps. So in this one, I use my thumb and I also use a paring knife, but we're actually gonna be using the back part of the knife, not the sharp part. So what we're gonna do for this one is we're gonna press our thumb from the inside of the pie plate out towards the outside edge, and we're gonna use the paring knife to pull the dough back towards our hand a little bit, that's why we're using the not sharp side, to kind of make this indentation. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna take me doing it a couple of times for you to see it, but what it's going to do is it's going to make a rounded edge instead of a pointy edge. It's kind of a beautiful scalloped finish. So I'm pressing my thumb in and then using the back of the knife to pull back and augment that scallop. The scalloped edge is a little bit more refined than a classic finger crimp, so it's especially nice when you wanna make a fancy pie. While I've got out my paring knife, let's look at one of my other really easy techniques that uses a paring knife that also makes kind of a rope sort of crimp. So for this one, we wanna dip the knife in flour. We're also gonna be using the back of the knife, not the sharp pointy part. And we're gonna press the back of the knife into the pie dough at kind of a 45 degree angle, just leaving an imprint behind. And this is kind of a great example of, you know, just a slight variation on a classic fork crimp. Mm -hmm. 
This is a super easy crimp that still looks like a million bucks if you don't have time to do anything fancy. Let's talk about another super easy utensil crimp, using a utensil to press into the dough to make an effect and an imprint. So in this case, I'm gonna use a small spoon and I'm gonna actually press the spoon in twice. First, I'm gonna press it more towards the inner edge of the pie plate, pressing firmly but not all the way through. And again, flour your spoon as needed. Then I'm gonna press it again closer to the outside edge. So it's just pressing twice, but it makes a really, really beautiful little scallop. And because you're using the spoon, as long as you put the spoon in approximately the same place, it's gonna look super, super even without having to worry about getting your fingers just so. For a super simple scallop crust, a spoon can't be beat. Another fun thing I like to do is to combine crimp styles. So using some finger crimps along with a utensil crimp. I'm actually gonna use my fingers to make three little finger crimps. And I'm gonna make my fingers a little bit smaller and show you that kind of more delicate shape I was talking about. And then we'll use a fork to make three fork indentations and we'll alternate. And it's a really fun, I call it the fork and crimp. So we'll do the same thing that we did before, just holding our fingers a little bit smaller to make pressing my fingers towards each other and down towards the pie plate. Once we've got three, I'll bring the fork in and make three fork indentations. Sometimes when you get to the end, it's nice to make sure that you make enough room for yourself. Just be cognizant when you get towards the end. It helps make sure that everything looks even. A classic fork crimp, which is just pressing the tines of a fork into a crust, is one of the most beloved crust crimping techniques out there. But I like to gussy mine up just a tiny bit. It's still just as easy. So I'm just gonna press it into the crust at an angle, so see, the line down here towards the edge of the pie crust is a little bit shorter. Then I'm going to do the same thing the other direction. And I call this the fork chevron because it makes kind of a chevron shape going in towards one another. This is a very easy but slightly elevated fork crimp that I just love, the fork chevron. This next crimp actually uses scissors and it's really, really easy, but looks so incredible. I call it the Epi crimp because I got the idea inspired by a classic way to shape baguettes, which trims them with scissors. And it sort of looks like a stalk of wheat when the baguette is baked. And it has a similar sort of wreath-like effect when you do it on a pie. We're gonna hold our scissors at a 45 degree angle and make a snip in the pie dough all the way around. Try to keep the spacing between your cuts as uniform as you can. Now we're gonna separate and kind of fan each piece out in the opposite direction. So one piece will go this way, one piece will go, and we'll just work our way around the entire pie plate. This is such a festive and beautiful pie edge, but it could not be easier to do. All you need is a pair of scissors. This is a classic edge that's also made using scissors and it's called the checkerboard. It's actually most commonly used for chess pies. We're just gonna cut our dough fully all the way through to the inside edge from the outside edge and we'll leave about a good inch and a half between cuts. You wanna keep the spacing fairly even. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold every other one in towards the pie filling. Sometimes this is easier to do after you've filled your pie, especially if you have a liquid custard filling like a chess pie. Okay, so once these pieces are folded in, you've got kind of this varying, some squares out, some squares towards the inside. It is a very fun and cool texture finish for your pie crust. 
saying before, you can really find any kind of thing in your house that will make an impression and use it to make a pie edge. This one is actually inspired by my friend, colleague, mentor. Ooh. <laughs> Got excited talking about her, Libby Summers. She used a pearl necklace to press a pattern into the outside edge, and it reminded me of something I always have in my kitchen when I'm making pie, my ceramic pie weights. They're really small, just like kind of a bead. Of course, you could also use a bean, really anything you've got in your kitchen, and I'm just going to press it into the edge of the pie crust all the way around to make a little almost pearl-like effect. Speedy crimping. <laughs> this is such a fun way to add texture to the outside edge of your pie crust, and it also looks super cool after baking. We always get a ton of questions in the comments for Bake It Up A Notch, and you guys know I love answering your baking questions. So we pulled some of the most commonly asked questions and we're gonna try answering a few of them for our little pie bite size episode. If you guys like this, be sure to let us know in the comments so we can do more in future bite size episodes. Fard McTater asks, whenever I make pie crust, all goes well until I try to roll it out. It cracks and falls to pieces like it's too brittle. Any idea why? A pie crust that's too brittle is all about hydration. When it's under hydrated, the dough is going to be really difficult to work with. It's gonna break apart like you're saying, it might even be crumbly. When it's over hydrated, on the other hand, it will be sticky and difficult to roll out. So it's all about perfect hydration. Be sure to check out our dough episode. Deborah Thornley asks, I want to blind bake a flaky pie crust for chiffon pie. Can I do that the evening before, then make the chiffon in the morning? It's actually one of my favorite things about par and blind baking. They can always be done up to 24 hours in advance. It's especially true with par baking because that pie has a filling that's going to be baked again, so it's going to re-crisp in the oven. It's also okay with blind baked crusts, just be sure to cover them and store them at room temperature. Nicole Schock asks, I don't understand when to par bake, crying emoji. What fillings benefit from par baking? No, don't cry, Nicole, we don't want that. We only want happiness around pie. I really recommend par baking for any single crust pie that has a filling that is going to require baking a second time. So what do I mean by that? I'm just talking about the difference between par and blind baking. Par baking is partially baking. Any single crust pie, um, if it's got, you know, kind of a baked filling, like a cherry, a single crust cherry pie, a pumpkin pie, a pecan pie, all of these are single crust pies. The reason we like to do that is because the filling is going to bake faster than it's going to take for the crust to set. In a double crust pie, it requires more time in the oven, so the bottom crust usually bakes by the time the whole pie has come together. Don Horrell wants to know, I watched your video multiple times and was so careful, but my crust was a pool of butter. What did I do wrong? Don't worry, Don, you are not alone. Lots of people struggle with this with an all butter crust because it is a little bit trickier, but there are a few things you can do. The reason that this happens is because the butter has to be fully coated with flour at every stage. Sometimes during rolling, the flour sort of rises to the surface. If it's not protected by flour in the oven, it's gonna be prone to melting out. There's a few different things that you can do. One, mix your butter in a little bit smaller. You might have left your pieces so large that they had no choice but to kind of burst through the protective floury barrier. The second thing that you can do is enlist the help of my extra flaky method. This rolls out the dough and folds it into quarters one to two times. And what that does is it kind of also helps to shingle the butter, cover it a little bit more. It's really protective and as a bonus, it adds lots of extra flakiness. If you continue to struggle with this over and over, you can also try to use half of the amount of butter as shortening. Shortening has a higher melting point than butter, so it's a little bit easier to work with. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Bake It Up A Notch Bite Size, where we talked about 10 beautiful ways to crimp your pie dough edges. If you try any of these, be sure to let us know. Tag Food52, tag me, at E. McDowell, and let us know in the comments what else you wanna see in future Bite Size episodes. Be sure to like and subscribe so you always know when new episodes are coming out, and we will see you next time. Happy baking! Get